Academy of Hallmark Watchers. I feel like I need to do like this. <laughs> we are talking about Sweet Carolina, starring Lacey Chabert and Tyler Hines. Just a moment of silence. <laughs> My name is Dara. Welcome to Dear Hallmark, where we nerd and geek out on all things Hallmark Channel. Um, before our meeting begins today and before our conversation starts, I have an announcement. Um, I watched the season finale of When Calls the Heart. That's all I'm going to say is. And it made me think about When Hope Calls. I miss that show. I greatly miss that show. I greatly appreciate it and love that show. So what I am going to do exclusively on Instagram is review episodes of When Hope Calls. I haven't watched it in about a year and some change. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, if you don't follow Dear Homework on Instagram, get thee to Instagram and follow Dear Homework. Because we, listen, we got a whole crew over there. We get it in, okay? So be sure to join me over on Instagram and let's talk about when Hope Calls. What else is going on? Because Hallmark, we need a second season. Stop playing with our lives. This good witch mess, don't nobody care about no witches? Give me <laughs> when Hope Calls. Don't just cap our heads like that. All right, I'm sorry for yelling. Let's get into this review. Sweet Carolina, as I said, stars Lacey Chabert and Tyler Hines as Josie and Cooper. So Josie's sister dies unexpectedly and Josie and her husband leave her kids, her teenage kids in the care of Josie. Josie, her hope, Josie, her brother and her parents all were shocked as they were in the lawyer's office for the reading of the will to find that the kids were left in Josie's care. The cry that Lacey did when she found out her sister died, whoo, sis, sis, I felt that. I felt that, man. That was some good acting, Lacey. That was so good. So, so, so good. She played it. The family got on my nerves. I was, how dare you think that she can't take care of these kids? They were, com oh yeah, I got notes by the way. They were coming for Josie's pearl. All 26 pearls that were, I'm prefer proverbial pearls. They were coming for her neck. The entire, about 75% of the movie was her father, her brother and this random couple that added nothing to the movie but but gasoline were coming for her life think, saying that she can't take care of these get these kids which leads me to my next point Nate and Molly who sent for you who cares Peta why we didn't need any of her. Molly came through with the sauce. And I'm not talking swag sauce. I'm talking that bitter sauce that is just like, why is this on my sandwich at all? It could have done without this. Molly, oh, help Jesus. Because maybe, they, I don't know. Molly was an unnecessary factor, a non-factor. I don't even, just Why? Sis, you coming for a girl, I think Molly probably was jealous of her, which is why she was trying to throw so many jabs. But Molly, this is what I got to say to you. Skirt. That's all I got to say. Next, some topics that were tackled in this movie. The one I have is bitterness will eat you alive. And we saw that through her father. He was so bitter that she left to go to the city and pursue her dreams of becoming a marketing executive. 
He was so bitter that she left the small town. He was so bitter that she wanted more for herself. He was so bitter that she wanted something better for herself. He was so bitter that she wanted to pursue her dreams. And he, she, he made her pay for it every day that she was there when she decided to stay and take care of them kids. We'll come back though. Another topic they tackled, how kids process grief. We see them lash out in um, sporadic spurts of anger, random bouts of crying, being openly emotional, which, of course, we know. I just think <clears throat> good on Hallmark for incorporating these many topics within the movie. Um, unforgiveness is another one. Um, forgiving yourself. Being too hard on yourself. Um, one thing I do have to ask, and this is I'm this is a hallmark principle in general. The way the city is portrayed, and as someone that that resides and comes from a metropolitan city, Philadelphia. Why is the city always betrayed as like the big bad wolf? <laughs> Why is the city always seem it always is portrayed as this abyss of um dislike and disdain? There is so much disdain for the city. And it's like the city is more than just hustle and bustle and grind and greed and money. It's culture, it's expansion, it's industrialization, it's forward thinking, it's, there's community in the city. Like, I feel like there are so many untapped city storylines that we could have that, and I think the way it was portrayed in this movie definitely rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, can we stop portraying the city like this? And by the way, with the movie being called Sweet Carolina, they're in North Carolina, but the city they're talking about is New York City. I'm like, there are so many cities across the eastern seaboard before you get to New York City that referring to it as just the city. It could be Charlotte. It could have been Philly. It could have been, um, it, it was, there was so many other cities. It could have been Atlantic City. Like, it could have been D.C. It could have been Baltimore. There were so many other cities that could have been referred to as the city that... Whatever. That's just kind of like a personal thing. I'm like, why we gotta, like, bash on the city like that? You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah. Back to the dad. I loved that they addressed his bitterness and his hurt, though. There was a scene where, um... Josie kept trying. She kept, she was like, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. So she's washing the dish. She's helping her dad wash dishes. And it came out that she was like, like, it came out how hurt he was. And even in his transparency and in his, in his honesty of his hurt, he still tried to push her away. He, he still tried to say, just go back to New York. Go back to your life. We got everything here. I felt that. I'm like, fam, what in the world? What in the world? Um, One thing Hallmark did well in this movie, the flashback sequence. Um, Every stationary item, whether it was a truck, whether it was a store, whether it was a photo, whether it was a song, they went back in time and showed you what happened to create that memory, which I appreciated. I really found that endearing. Tyler Hines can do no wrong at this point. I mean, now here's another thing I was thinking about. I could really see this movie without Cooper, without Tyler Hines' character. This movie was strong enough on its own without him. However, I did think... It was cool that he was there. He was kind of the straight person. He brought some humor. And then he was just he was just chill. Like he was being Tyler, you know? Um What would I give this movie? I'm toying between three and three point five. 
And I'm toying between that because of what I mentioned about the city and then Nate and Molly just really rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, why is everybody coming for her life? I love that they that even though she said she was going to leave, she didn't end up doing it. If she would have actually left, I would have been upset. I would have been upset. Would I watch this again? I don't know. I don't know. But I will say it was good. It was definitely good. It was on the gooder, gooder, sis, that's not a word. <laughs> it was on the, the good side of things, so. But talk to me, what was your favorite scene in the movie? Um, did you care for this movie at all? It's It was much more, it's much more dramatic than what we're used to in our typical Hallmark Channel movies um, as we wait for summer nights to begin. But let me know your thoughts. So, yeah, that's kind of what I have for you for Sweet Carolina. Um, I appreciated it. I look forward. I don't think there's any new, any more movies coming out until June 5th. At least I haven't seen any previews. June 5th is the inaugural night for Summer Nights, where we have um, Pascal Hutton and Kevin Smith for You Had Me at Aloha. And I am planning to do a Summer Nights preview on Instagram to kind of give my preemptive thoughts of how the movies will turn out, how I'll rank them, things like that. So again, be sure to follow Dear Hallmark on Instagram for that. And I, let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. I'll talk to you guys in the comments and I will see you in the next video.